between um, let me help you with the problem. You're on the right track. Don't disappoint me. Where is that? Sir. This is the problem. Yes. Go on. Sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Conclude. Based on the data computed, there's a difference in the average yield. Perfect. Perfect. That's all. There's significant difference because, my friends, we just said that, uh, where is my board? We are rejecting this guy. This guy says that they are what? There is no difference. They are the same. If I'm rejecting this claim, it means that there is actually what? A difference between the dividend yield for both what? Stock. That's the same. I hope the T, this example, this example is self explanatory, okay? Uh, guys, the questions I sent to you, have you tried it? No. Look, I was telling your class rep that it is, it is sad. This is our fourth week or fifth week. I told you from the beginning, if you don't understand, send me a message via email. Up to date, nobody has done that. Means that everything I'm teaching is like non fact. Just like the other guy said, this is too bogus. Yeah, didn't I entirely it? But I expect that you practice the question, send me an email question, I will answer you. Is that okay? So try your hands. Mm -hmm. I'll see better. I'm going to send you multiple questions again. Okay, because sir. As it stand, your test or your exams, I don't know whether it's going to you write it live via Zoom or you are going to type it. I don't know, but whatever it is, I will send you questions and you have to answer and I will mark. <laughs> if you don't understand, you have to ask. Somebody say whole show. The whole show. There is nothing like the whole show. The whole show only happens in the cinema. Stop me if you don't understand. Then I pause and explain what you don't understand. But when you moving in now, you now walk at your operator the whole show. It doesn't happen at the cinema. So please note that. I know that you guys have challenges uh, as far the DE, but you need to step up so we can also help you along the line. But if you are not stepping up, we can't help you. The degree is one. They, they won't write on the degree that this is a distance education degree. No. The degree is Bachelor of Science in whatever, whatever, from the University of Ghana, PAM. When you go for interview, nobody cares whether you went to distance education or you did regular or you did weekend. The thing is that you claim you have a certificate. Prove it. So step up your game and we'll have a fruitful on that note, I'm ending this lecture 11, which is uh, the rest, go through them. If you don't understand, the pair sample, I'll discuss with my other colleague whether we will examine you with the remaining ones or not, but try and go through what we have discussed. Okay, so let's move to the next lecture. I know we won't go far, but it's better I start. Then we can continue again. All right, so we've discussed that where we have a single sample population, a simple population, single population, or we have two population, we use the T test and the Z test. However, sometimes you want to check whether there are significant differences among more than two population, okay? So if we are dealing with more than two population, we cannot use the T-test and the Z-test again. More than two population. We use another test statistics called analysis of variance. Analysis of variance. We say ANOVA. That is section, uh, I'm on section 12. Analysis of variance. 
And that's what I'm going to discuss with you again. And I'm saying that where you have more than two population, or you are sampling from more than two population, we use the analysis of what variance, ANOVA. Like I said in the previous session, we looked at comparing means between two groups. In this session, we shall look at comparing average values for three independent groups. In this case, uh, let me use the court case happening now. How many parties do we have contesting the issues at the court? How many of them? Three parties. We have what? Three. Three. We have the NDC. We have the MPP and we have what, the Electoral Commission. So if you want to check whether what happened in 2012 and what is happening now, if there are significant differences, the sample sizes we have or the population we have here, they are more than two. So we have to now use a different word technique that is called the ANOVA. So when you have more than two, you use ANOVA. I expect that after this, we will recognize what and how to use the analysis of variance. We will perform a single factor hypothesis test. We will conduct and interpret our analysis. Then we'll further go to a two-way factor analysis along the line. I'm using these two textbooks, so please, if you have them, go and read them. Now, what you should understand that every statistical test you use, there are assumptions underlining it. You don't just choose a statistical test to use. There are assumptions, okay? And what is that? My what? Your screen. Your screen. Yes, please. Oh. Is it showing now? Yes, please, it is. Good. So Thank we are saying that there are assumptions to every statistical test that we choose to use. And it is not different from ANOVA, what we are coming to use, okay? Therefore, ANOVA is a technique used to test the differences in means of more than two population by definition. Why and when do we use ANOVA is subject to these assumptions, these four assumptions, and this could be a multiple choice question. The first assumption is that all the population should be normally what? Distributed. Means that the sample mean, or we are saying that the differences in variance should be different from each other. They should be normally distributed. You should have a representation of the data you are going to use. The second says that uh, the second assumption is that the population should have the same standard deviation or the population variances should be equal. The next one is that the observations you are using from the sample should be independent from each other. Means that the data from each other should be mutually exclusive. Whatever occurrence in one should not have any influences on the other, they should be independent. Then the last assumption is that the data we are using should be numerical enough, either they are interval or ratio. It means that we can quantify the data you have. These four assumptions underline the use of analysis of variance, which are very important. Once we've established that, we can now go further to talk about, based on the assumptions, we need to find means 
that will be closer to each other. Then we test the statistics. We test the variance of the sample to find whether there are differences or not. In other words, we are still going to use the hypothesis test, which is HO and HA. To simply say is that if we want to find whether there are differences among the sample or the population we have, we need to write the hypothetical claim mathematically. Then we can proceed further to compute and check whether we are indeed accepting the null hypothesis or we are rejecting the null hypothesis. And please note that the assumption here is the same as we are using for the first. Whether we are accepting or we are failing to reject the null hypothesis. This time around, we'll use another table called the F distribution table. So I've given you that one as well, the tables I gave. You see the F distribution table, and that is what we are going to use. Good. If we are using that, then we're saying that based on the information we have, we can go further to write the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So please watch the first one. I've circled it. The null hypothesis here says that your mean for the first population is equal to the mean of the second population, is equal to the mean of the third population. If you have up to K population, we are saying that mu one is equal to mu two, is equal to mu three, is equal to mu four. Let's say that I have four population I'm using. This is the null hypothesis. Then the alternative hypothesis says that Mu one is not equal to mu two. It's not equal to mu three. It's not equal to mu what four. Means that Prince, can you lower? Can you mute yourself? Of you are just something else. Okay, so it's just to say that HO is said all the immune population mean are equal. That's all it's saying. Then this one is saying that not all the population mean are the same. Some could be the same, but they cannot always be the same. And we will prove it later on when we are doing our computation. So please note that this one right in the look, what uh, as for ANOVA, it is a surety that I'll ask I'll ask you a question on ANOVA. So please just follow through. The null hypothesis says that mu one is equal to mu two, mu two is equal to mu three, depending on the population size you are using, the groups. If they are three. Mu one is equal to mu two, is equal to mu three. That's H. Then H says that mu one is not equal to mu two. Mu two is not equal to mu three. This is just to say that all the population, the three independent population variances are the same. This also say the variances are not the same. This is what you have here. This is H O. And this is HA. You see that we have different, different normal distribution KEF. Just to say that if they are the same or they are not what the same. So to conclude, the null hypothesis say that all means are the same. Like the, you are doing trial, you have drug that you want to test on people like the Corona uh, COVID vaccine. We want to check whether vaccine one, vaccine two, vaccine three, they will give you the same effect or they won't give you the same effect. 
if they are all the same, then we say that all the COVID vaccines are the same as the null hypothesis. The alternative will say that all the COVID vaccines are not what the same. Okay. So if we establish that now, because we are using ANOVA, you will hear me say F computed. 